fear that the Constitution Working Group was around the merit of our community system of governance and the fact that it lends itself to greater participation of the public in our decision making. It is a strength of our community system in the more public engagement. The report before us tonight said it could remove public questions because of our high level of public engagement. It don't, did not say shall, or will, or would. One officer report then qualifies any recommendation that in any event there should always be public questions that are urgent, important, or may impact on the borough in the same way elected members may have asked such questions with strategic importance. So there is no move to delete public questions, but more recognition that our council operate the committee system of governance provides many methods of public participation. Over the last year, we've held a number of your say, our future events, and in the new proposals, there will be further roundtable events incorporating the face of public events, the health and wellbeing, and the same practical partnership. Also proposed as a community forum, previously the neighborhood forums, and all policy chairs will be posting a question and answer session for members of the public in between these two forums. The actual policy committees welcome members of the public who bring questions on children's, adults, neighbourhoods and regeneration. And we also have the children's partnership. I chair the Health and Wellbeing Board and many people attend that. Also chair the, chair the Safe Particle Partnership and also elected members have board surgeries whilst only some members operate them. I myself, as leader of the council, I have a leader's surgery each and every Monday at four o'clock for members of the public to come and ask questions. With regards to questions to chairs without notice, I personally have no problem in answering any questions in full council. Most members, to be fair, don't wait until we have a council meeting. They tend to just pick up the phone and ask, or simply call in my office. Or indeed, any member can actually turn up to the actual committees participate in the debate whilst the decision is being made. In respect of time for full council meetings, I had thought we had agreed on the 21st of January that all members were in full agreement that full council would remain at 7 p.m. Overall, I am more than happy to accept the summary of recommendations in part three of the one officer report, but I would like to amend it so it's subject to public questions remaining as they are now, member questions on notice remain as they are now, and again agree that full council meetings <coughs> shall remain at 7 p.m. on the Thursday evening. And I put that forward. Is there a member to the recommendation? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, uh, I rise to second that, but I also want to address uh, a number of points that were raised with me by Comes of the public over the weekend, uh, and I'll respond in the same way as I respond to them in my email as well. Uh, it is my belief that democracy is alive and well in our people, and the committee system we operate under today is far more democratic than the cabinet system we operated under previously. The key day, the key day to day decisions of this local authority are now not done in small courtrooms or indeed in full council. But actually, they're doing the policy committees, which are open to the public. In Children's Services Committee, for example, public participation is not only welcome, but it's encouraged, and it also enriches the debate. On the issue of public questions, members may recall when I was elected into this post uh, as chair of Children's Services last year, there was a question outstanding from the previous municipal year around the welfare of our looked after children. That question took some 10 weeks to answer to assure the public that the children were safe in local authority care. That cannot be right. That a question of such importance of the welfare of our looked after children takes 10 weeks to answer when actually it could have been answered the next day. So an element of common sense actually needs to be applied to questions from members of the public. The public 
must always be able to reach their elected members and be able to hold us to account for the decisions that we made. That includes asking questions at full count. On the time of council meetings, I support the meeting to remain at 7 o'clock. So I appreciate there is no perfect time uh, for, for any meetings of any committee whatsoever. There's, there's always going to be members of the public who are excluded no matter what time <coughs> we hold meetings of this council. But I do support remaining at 7 o'clock. And finally, on the questions of policy chairs, uh, again, I have no plan whatsoever about answering questions. Uh, about answering questions on the decisions that have been made from the committee of which I am chair. And I think what the council leaders have said. Councillor Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I find it absolutely quite astonishing that what was discussed at the Constitutional Working Group, and I won't go into in too much detail for various reasons, that suddenly we find ourselves this evening by the ruling group, uh, backtracking on what was actually said. Well, uh, what was actually in the minutes of that uh, constitutional meeting, or what's in the agenda of this meeting, are two very different things entirely. So I'm very, very, I'm very pleased that we've had a strong reaction from the public, quite rightly so, and that's why you've had to backtrack, and also quite rightly so. And you wonder why you find yourselves in this situation time and time again. The reason for that is because you don't listen. You don't. There are many, many situations. And I'm saying, what about the 3,500 people who voted against the United States? You've ignored that. This is another classic case of the ruling group refusing to listen to the ordinary people of this town time and time again. Yes, you have tracked. I applaud that. I applaud that you've kept public uh, questions and we have uh, the time is kept at 7 o'clock in the evening. I applaud that. Thank you. We're not going to go down this ridiculous route of changing timings for council. Thank you. Um, Chair, fake news is a term that has sadly become part of our lexicon in recent months. It's a phrase associated with a watercratic, small minded individual who has of little discernible ability or intelligence and who has somehow found his way to power to the detriment of those who are supposed to be. So, it's also a bit of a mantra of President Trump. In the face of overwhelming public pressure and outrage, and outrage the recommendation from the Labour led committee to restrict public questions. And to all the times of meetings, which is in black and white before us tonight, is inexplicably branded as fake news and the heart of those under the trunk. Even more disgraceful is the charge that it's somehow a plot to undermine the parliamentary candidate for the Labour Party, as if I and others forced Labour members of this committee to come up with a different suggestion. Sorry, Chair. Councillor Thompson, Councillor Thompson, you can just have a second. Thank you. Yeah, we've got the time then to speak. Three minutes of speed. Earlier on this evening, actually, I did actually mention about political considerations uh, and increasingly at every meeting, I'm reminding members uh, of the obligations of the conference. Uh, just to ensure that uh, members treat everybody else as a member, a member, a member of the public, uh, it's respect uh, and caution as regards to the government's government's constitutional certain implications uh, on individuals. Uh, it's, uh, it's not really actually the public members in this chamber uh, to be contrary to the protocol. So I'm asking to remind them of the implications of that. Thanks for the time to remind I agree with the interest the comments made by the leaders that you would never restrict public questions and never exclude working people from means by fixing time during the day. But here's the real news it's been done before. It's the Labour group that finds supplementary questions and we've been done by Labour members right here tonight. And it was with the Labour leader that voted against scheduling, scheduling some committees in the evening to allow the working people to attend. Mr. Chairman, when it comes to restricting public questions and excluding working people, this guy has fallen. <laughs> we all know that if there'd been no force, no outcry, no e-workers coming upon the horizon, 
These proposals aim to make a quite people through by a guy so faithful of public scrutiny, he literally do anything to avoid it. Nevertheless, I welcome his new turn. And while he's in the mood for turning, I suggest we go a little further tonight. Let's prove our commitment to openness and transparency and accessibility to democracy in this town. Banning public questions and to quote Alan Clark on this was a policy designed for the few rather than the many. It was an assault on our democracy. Councillors read in pre prepared statements that offer no resident opportunity to follow up, no opportunity to clarify, no opportunity to say whether happy with the answer is designed to do one thing stifle the public's ability to criticise those elected members who I suspect the faithful that would not stand up to. Therefore, I'd like to amend tonight's report to include the reader's statement of public supplementary questions for the public and for councillors. I'm sure there's many people who are going to make the for that. Before we go a little further, I propose the enhanced, enhanced accessibility to meetings for working people to get rid of the outdated policy when we have it at least 25% Council meetings held in an evening to ensure that working people can access their democracy at least some of the time. And finally, finally, further still, and finally, the leader of the council has said he's prepared to answer questions at any time, anywhere. And I think that's commendable. I propose that we write a bold statement into our constitution to ensure that there's a 15 minute segment at the beginning of each council agenda dedicated to the leader's questions without bonus. Let those members also approve that commitment to all this transparency and accessibility by voting for them tonight. Thank you. Because I would like you to confirm the advice that you gave to me as chair of Daily Services in relation to how to handle an actual petition, regardless of its number and size. There is a process that we go through to be able to deal with that. Uh, so I would like you to actually give that advice now uh, in public. Thank you. Okay, please. Chair, sure, yeah, I'm mindful that uh, what I've given the council meeting this evening. Uh, yeah, I've had to receive the communication that I've been received for the petition this evening, and I've actually received uh, that from the council this evening uh, before, say, the meeting started at 7 o'clock. And that's a uh, petition which relates to the business you're dealing with now. We used to have uh, a statutory petition scheme uh, and uh, <coughs> the legislation uh, some years previously. And uh, depending upon the number of signatories of the petition, uh, it could invite council debate, it could actually request council to take certain steps, it could actually ask council to research a matter. So there were the active matters which could be done on the back of the petition. Uh, that was abolished uh, with the introduction of the Global Max uh, in 2011. So there's now uh, no uh, statutory petition scheme. Equally, the same legislation abolished the uh, promotion uh, of uh, local democracy principle. Uh, it seems quite absurd. So the situation we have now uh, is that uh, we're conscious that uh, we receive petitions. So it's actually force behind them. Uh, where a matter is of a local ward interest, uh, we generally actually inform local ward members that so they're in person and uh, have regard as to their views and what should be done. If it's a more borough wide uh, matter, uh, invariably we would find the leader of council who relate to one of the policy committees and the chair of that committee, take a view with an officer report. Then we take to that committee, uh, even actually give us magnitude, uh, maybe even report to council. It's a far, far different system than what we had uh, previously. Uh, we are conscious based that uh, petitions uh, have a strength of feeling behind them. Uh, the one I've seen this evening has got uh, 1,043 speeches to it. Uh, but equally, uh, it's an indication of strength of feeling. Really, no more than that. It doesn't have any more. Being Beyond the persuasive quality. It really demands that uh, it should actually be uh, a council debate that should follow. That's what happened in this particular instance. So, uh, unfortunately, I think it was progressive to remove the statutory petition scheme. Uh, you receive petitions, as some members are probably aware, uh, and uh, same with the process of dealing with them. But it's quite mindful that we had uh, previously in the legislation. Thank you. Councillor Bailey. 
Councillor Riddle. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've spoken a lot before in the past about the questions and things of that nature, and I take the point that the Policy Committee is obviously a good forum for the public to submit the questions. The issue for a lot of people concerns work. The Office for National Statistics just very recently, a month ago, said that 74.8% of the population of this country are working age 16 years old to 64 actually work. Of those people, 26.1 million are private sector workers. 82.9% of the people, believe it or not, in this country are at work doing work when council meetings take place. On top of that, the Office for National Statistics have estimated that 80% of those people work one hour either side of nine to five. So policy committee meetings in the daytime are <coughs> an awful lot of working people. That is an issue a lot of people have. Coming to the actual um, U10, and I will call it a U10, because it is a U10. We saw a U10 on sequel that's been back on the beach, <coughs> and came because of public pressure. We saw a U10 on a lot of increases at a substantial rate. It became under public pressure. This is a U10, and we can all see that it is. And the reason we go to U10 is because the track record, as has been said, for this governance system, for gradually eroding our democratic procedures, is well documented. It was this council, majority led by the ruling group, that removed the public's right to ask supplementary questions. It was this council that banned members of the public from actually being allowed to speak and read out their own questions. It was this council that reduced the time allowed for public questions and reduced the time opposition councillors like myself are actually allowed to speak in a democratically elected chamber. It was this council that ignored a public consultation calling for more meetings to be held in the evening, and it was also this council very recently that refused to publish a list of public questions rejected by this council. That does not sound like a council that embraces democracy. It sounds like a council that embraces secrecy. <laughs> let us be very clear and let everybody know that this is a U10. And Councillor James, for someone that doesn't drive, you are getting very good at U10. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, I don't think I'm going to add anything to the matter of public questions. I think that's already been answered. Um, by the members surrounding it here. I, I want to get on to one or two of the other items that are on the agenda and just ask questions and make comments on them if I may. Um, item 3.2, uh, with regards to the two neighbourhood forums, um, will obviously will continue and will be renamed. In there, it doesn't mention uh, what the timing for like to be for two forums. Has it been agreed already? No. No? Okay. In fact, I'm going to make a proposal uh, then. It's not changing, obviously, I'm making a proposal on the book. Um, but it's a request, really, that we at least try and alternate them uh, between daytime and evening forums so that we, we are trying to engage the larger audience um, and making sure that those who are at work uh, during the day can attend the evening meetings and obviously vice versa. Um, the only other big point I'd like to bring up is um, in relation to. Constitutional Committee. The question again, with this being new committee being created, um, can they, can they all confirm if the chair, vice chair, will be receiving an additional special responsibility that will support the committee? Uh, and if so, have we already budgeted that this time? Can I answer the uh, main comment on the first part? Uh, we have tried. Uh, forums on mornings, afternoons, evenings, we've tried them in different parts of the town uh, relative to either the north or the south, etc. And each time we end up basically with the same number of people each time across the board. So um, there's never been any um, time when you could say that that was the best time. Everything has been tried. Yeah, I appreciate that, Mr. Um, I'm just trying to keep everybody happy. Isn't it? Make sure that we as a council provide opportunities for everybody. I'm just clarifying that that has actually been tried. No, I don't think it's been tried. Chair, just some clear confirmation on the Constitution Committee for uh, some responsibility of answers. Um, I can certainly give a, a written response. Um, that was what happened between 2002 and 2012. Um, there is to be a report back to members uh, in the uh, from the Commission Panel uh, upon members' allowances, so it should be put there. So it should be put to the top of each meeting. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
very much for that. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Councillor Black. <coughs> Uh, I think everything has pretty much been covered, uh, especially what I've brought down. Uh, however, uh, I would like a uh, clarification if possible. Uh, it states in the, uh, the, the committee report that the chairs have flexibility, or the chairs have flexibility to change the times of their committee meetings. Um, do we know how many times that's been done beyond the normal five o'clock? I.e., to allow public involvement. Chair, yeah, again, I can do a brief response on it. And also, uh, uh, last but not last thing, uh, I think by removing the public questions, I know it's been a user, um, we, we are massively reducing the public involvement and therefore reducing the public engagement, an aspect that we are openly trying to increase. Which, because of that, I, I still don't understand why the constitutional group brought it up, uh, but never mind. Um, Lastly, um, and again, my apologies for being all over with this, um, I'd like to second, I know what people's recommendations were, um, however, I'd like to second what Councillor Thompson said earlier in regards to the motions of 15 minutes, uh, Chair, questions, and the very simple Thank you. So that suggests that if an amendment to the constitution is put on the floor of council, it will be deferred to the next council meeting. It doesn't say to the constitutional working group, it doesn't say to the constitutional committee, it says it will be discussed at the next council meeting. So I propose that both proposals that I put forward are discussed at the next council meeting, not by a subgroup, by its full council, and maybe go a step further of saying that in those six weeks between now and then, we use the survey in one key and the other consultation tools to find out if members of the public actually want to take advantage of those programs. Yeah. What they're going to do.